high. I'm pure excellence, the most important political mind this side of the United States. But let's just explore this idea. I'm gonna pass it to my homeboy, James. James, go ahead and take this away. Five, the stimulus lighthouse alert community presents the people versus Donald J. Trump. The criminal case versus him is already in the works and it could go to trial quicker than you think. He accused looked uneasy as he stood to testify in the worn out courtroom. Worn a dark fit and somber tie, he seemed aged, dimmed, his posture visibly stooped. The previous year had been a massive come down for the 76 year old previous world leader. For years, the bombastic one time showman had danced his way past scores of claims and blustered through a sprawl of scandals. Then he left workplace and was indicted for tax scams. As a jam packed courtroom searched, he read from a curled sheaf of papers. It seemed as though the when unthinkable was on the verge of coming to pass, the country's former leader would be founded guilty and sent to a concrete cell. The date was October 19, 2012. The mail was Silvio Berlusconi, the longtime Prime Minister of Italy. Here in the United States, we have actually never yet seen such an occasion. No commander-in-chief has actually been charged with a crime, let alone dealt with jail time. However, if Donald Trump loses the election in November, he will surrender not only a sitting president's presumptive resistance from prosecution however also the levers of power he has aggressively co-opted for his own protection. Considering the number of criminal offenses he has dedicated, the time span over which he has committed them, and the variety of jurisdictions in which his criminal offenses have actually happened, his possible legal exposure is breathtaking. More than a lot's investigations are currently under method versus him and his partners. Even if only one or two of them lead to criminal charges, the procedures that follow will make the O.J. Simpson trial look like an afternoon in traffic court. It may seem unlikely that Trump will ever end up in a criminal court. His whole life, after all, is one long testament to the power of getting away with things, a masterclass in criminality without repercussions, even before he added presidentiality and all its privileges to his arsenal of defenses. As he himself once stated, when you're a star, they let you do it. However, for all his benefits and all his enablers, consisting of followers in the Justice Department and the federal judiciary, Trump now faces a level of legal risk unlike anything in his infamously checkered past and well beyond anything dealt with by any previous president leaving workplace. To evaluate the chances that he will wind up on trial, and how the procedures would unfold, I talked to a few of the country's leading district attorneys, defense lawyer, and legal scholars. For the past four years, they have been weighing the case versus Trump, the evidence currently collected, the witnesses prepared to affirm, the political and constitutional problems associated with prosecuting an ex-president. Once he leaves workplace, they agree, there is great reason to think Trump will face criminal charges. It's going to head towards prosecution, and the litigation is going to be fierce, says Bennett Gershman, a teacher of constitutional law at Pace Law School who served for years as a New York State District Attorney. Here, according to the legal professionals, is how Trump could end up being the very first previous president in American history to find himself on trial and maybe even behind bars. You may believe, offered all the criminal offenses Trump has actually extolled committing throughout his time in workplace, that the main path to prosecuting him would include the U.S. Justice Department. If Joe Biden is sworn in as president in January, his Attorney General of the United States will inherit a mountain of criminal evidence versus Trump accumulated by Robert Mueller and a host of inspectors general and congressional oversight committees. If the DOJ's inbound leadership green lights an examination of Trump after being briefed on any sensitive matters included in the evidence, federal prosecutors will progress at the fastest pace they can, states Mary McCord, the former acting Assistant Attorney General of the United States for National Security. They'll have lots of potential charges to choose from. Both Mueller and the Senate Intelligence Committee a Republican-led panel have extensively recorded how Trump dedicated blockage of justice, 18 U.S. Code Section 73, lied to investigators, 18 U.S. Code Section 1001, and conspired with Russian intelligence to commit an offense versus the United States, 18 U.S. Code Section 371. All three criminal offenses carry an optimal sentence of five years in jail per charge. According to legal specialists, Federal prosecutors might be prepared to indict Trump on several of these felonies as early as the first quarter of 2021, but prosecuting Trump for any criminal offenses he devoted as president would deal with two considerable and maybe deadly obstacles. Initially, on his way out of workplace, Trump might decide to preemptively pardon himself. I wouldn't be shocked if he releases a broad, sweeping pardon for any U.S. person who was a subject, a target, or a person of interest of the Mueller investigation, says Norm Eisen who worked as counsel to House Democrats during Trump's impeachment. 
Considering that scholars are divided on whether a self-pardon would be constitutional, what occurs next would depend nearly completely on which judge ruled on the concern. One judge might say, sorry, governmental pardons is something the Constitution grants solely to the president, so I'm going to dismiss this, states Gershman. Another judge may state, no, the president can't pardon himself. In either case, the case would likely wind up getting prosecuted all the method to the Supreme Court, maybe more than when, causing a long holdup. Even if the courts ultimately ruled a self-pardon unconstitutional, another big difficulty would stay, Trump's claims that executive benefit bars district attorneys from acquiring proof of governmental misbehavior. The arrangement has actually typically been restricted to protecting discussions in between presidents and their advisors from external examination. But Trump has attempted to broaden the defense to include basically anything that he or anybody in the executive branch has actually ever done. William Consovoy, among Trump's legal representatives, famously argued in federal court that even if Trump gunned someone down in the street while he was president, he could not be prosecuted for it while in workplace. Although the courts have repeatedly ruled against such sweeping arguments, Trump will continue to claim immunity from the judicial procedure after he leaves workplace a proven delaying tactic. If federal charges were ever brought, it is not likely that a trial would be arranged or begin any time in the foreseeable future, says Timothy W. Hoover president of the New York State Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. By the time any federal charges pertain to trial, Trump is likely to be either senile or dead. Even if he broke the law as president, the experts agree, he may well get away with it. But federal charges aren't the likeliest way that the people v. Donald J. Trump will play out. State laws aren't based on governmental pardons, and they cover a host of crimes beyond those dedicated in the White House. When it pertains to charging a previous president, State chief law officers and county district attorneys can go locations a U.S. attorney can. According to legal professionals, the man more than likely to drag Trump into court is the district attorney for Manhattan, Cyrus Vance Jr. It's an unexpected situation, offered Vance's well-deserved credibility as someone who has gone simple on the rich and popular. After taking office in 2010, he looked for to decrease Jeffrey Epstein's status as a sex culprit, dropped an examination into whether Ivanka Trump and Donald Trump Jr. had devoted scams in the marketing of the Trump Soho, and initially chose not to prosecute Harvey Weinstein in spite of strong proof of his sex criminal offenses. He has a track record for being particularly careful when it pertains to going after abundant people, since he understands that those are the ones who can pay for the actually powerful law practice, states Victoria Bossetti, a fellow at the Brennan Center for Justice who served on the group of attorneys that managed the Senate impeachment trial of Bill Clinton. And like most district attorneys, Vance is extremely protective of his win-loss rate. But it was Vance who stepped up when the federal case versus Trump failed. He's a politician, observes Martin Scheil, a previous IRS criminal detective. He's got his finger up. He understands which method the wind's blowing, and he knows the wind in New York is blowing versus Trump. It's in his political interest to sign up with that bandwagon. Last year, after U.S. attorneys in the Southern District dropped their investigation into the hush money that Trump had actually paid Stormy Daniels, Vance took up the case. Believing that LaFair Stormy may show to be part of a larger pattern of dubious transactions, his office started digging into Trump's finances. What Vance is examining, according to court filings, is proof of substantial and protracted criminal conduct at the Trump Organization, possibly involving bank scams, tax fraud, and insurance coverage scams. The New York Times has detailed how Trump and his household have long falsified records to prevent taxes, and during testimony prior to Congress in 2019, Trump's longtime fixer Michael Cohen mentioned that Trump had actually inflated the value of his assets to acquire a bank loan. Most importantly, all of these alleged crimes happened prior to Trump took office. That suggests no claims of executive advantage would use to any charges Vance may bring, and no presidential pardon could make them go away. A lot of possible objections and holdups would be ruled out right off the bat. What's more, the alleged offenses happened less than six years ago, within the statute of limitation for fraud in New York. Vance, simply put, is totally free to pursue Trump not as a jagged president however as a typical criminal who took place to get elected president. And the truth that he has actually been pursuing these cases while Trump is president is an indication that he won't be intimidated by the stature of the office after Trump leaves it. In writing an indictment against Trump, Vance's team might try to string together a laundry list of offenses in hopes of providing a frustrating wall of regret. But that approach, specialists warn, can end up being confusing. A two or three count indictment is simpler to describe to a jury, says Eileen Jaroslav, a previous assistant U.S. attorney. If they believe the individual had criminal intent, it does not matter if it's two counts or 20 counts, in many cases, since the sentence will be the same. There are two primary charges that Vance is most likely to pursue. 
The first is falsifying organization records, NY Penal Law Section 175.10. During Cohen's trial, federal district attorneys submitted a sentencing memorandum that explained how the Trump Organization had actually mischaracterized hush money payments as legal costs in its bookkeeping. Under New York law, falsifying records by itself is only a misdemeanor, however if it results in the commission of another criminal offense, it becomes a felony. And incorrect service records regularly lead to another offense, tax scams, NY Tax Law Section 1806. If Trump prepared his books, observed Shile, that false details would essentially flow into the tax returns. The very first criminal offense begets the second, making both the bookkeeper and the tax accounting professional liable. Since you have several folks included, Shile says, you could either bring a conspiracy charge, maximum sentence five years, or you could charge each individual with assisting and abetting the preparation of a false income tax return, with a max sentence of three years. To build a fraud case versus Trump, Vance subpoenaed his monetary records. However those records alone will not be enough, to secure a conviction, Vance will require to persuade a jury not just that Trump cheated on his taxes however that he meant to do so. If you simply have the files, the defense will say that defendant didn't have criminal intent, Jaroslav describes. I call it the I'm an idiot defense, I made a mistake. I didn't imply to do anything. Regrettably for Trump, both Cohen and his longtime accountant, Alan Weisselberg, have already indicated their desire to work together with prosecutors. What's excellent about having an accounting professional in the witness stand is that they can tell you about the conversation they had with the customer, Jaroslav states. Through appeals, Trump has handled to drag out the battle over his tax returns. The case has gone all the method to the Supreme Court, back down to the District Court, and back up to the Appeals Court. But Trump has lost at every phase, and it appears that his appeals might be exhausted this fall. Once Vance gets the tax returns, eyes and estimates, he could be all set to prosecute Trump as early as the second quarter of 2021. Shile, for one, thinks Vance might already have Trump's monetary records. It's regular treatment, he notes, for criminal tax investigators working with the Manhattan DA to obtain individual and service tax returns that are material to their query. However issuing a subpoena to Trump's accounting professionals may have been a way to signify to them that they could deal with criminal charges themselves unless they work together in the examination. When prosecuted, Trump would be arraigned at New York Criminal Court, a towering Art Deco building at 100 Center Street. Because a previous president with a Secret Service information can barely escape undetected, he would likely not be required to publish bail or surrender his passport while awaiting trial. His legal team, naturally, would do everything it could to extract the proceedings. Filing appeals has always been just another day at the office for Trump, who, by some price quotes, has dealt with more than 4,000 claims during the course of his career. However this time, his legal liability would reach various other state and regional jurisdictions, which will likewise be constructing cases against him. There's like 1037 other things where, if anyone put what he did under a microscope, they would probably discover a huge quantity of financial improprieties, says Scott Shapiro, director of the Center for Law and Philosophy at Yale University. Even accounting for legal delays, numerous professionals forecast that Trump would go to trial in Manhattan by 2023. The procedures would take place at the New York State Supreme Court building. Assuming that the judge was gotten ready for a limitless barrage of movements and objections from Trump's defense group, the trial may move rather quickly no longer than a couple of months, according to some legal observers. And provided the convictions that have been beat far versus much of Trump's top consultants, there's factor to believe that even pro-Trump jurors can be convinced to convict him. The evidence was frustrating, concluded one MAGA fan who served on the jury that convicted Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign chairman. I did not want him to be guilty. But he was, and no one is above the law. Trump's conviction would seal the greatest downfall in American politics considering that Richard Nixon. Unlike his partners who were sentenced to jail on federal charges, Trump would not be eligible for a presidential pardon or commutation, even from himself. And while his legal representatives would file every appeal they can consider, none of it would spare Trump the indignity of imprisonment. Unlike the federal court system, which typically enables prisoners to stay totally free throughout the appeals process, state courts tend to lose no time in carrying out penalty. After someone is sentenced in New York City, their next stop is Rikers Island. As soon as there, as Trump waited for transfer to a state jail, the guy who had actually dealt with the presidency like a piggy bank would receive yet another handout at the public cost, a toothbrush and toothpaste, bed linen, a towel, and a green plastic cup.